welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have um, the second week of Advent, candle of preparation. And we pray, O King of all nations, Jesus Christ, only joy in every heart, come and save your people. So that is our kind of our Advent thing and it is what we pray. We've got Candle of Hope, Candle of Preparation down. Next week, we will have Candle of Joy. So, and I will share with you our prayer that we pray with it each day. Uh, the first day, we have a whole thing. And then every night as we light the Advent to eat, um, we say that small prayer. So, yeah, we have that. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot going on, but not a lot going on. Uh, so I finished the doily and I have a little video clip that I'm going to pop in right here. So yes, I finished it. Um, no, I don't want to move the advent wreath every time. Um, I love it. It is super cool. Roughly around the wreath. I don't know. It just looks like it's made perfectly for it. Um, in a perfect world, the uh, wreath would be in the center of the table. But if we put it there, then nobody has room for their plates. So me and roommate kind of push it off to the tape to the side here, which is fine. Um, yeah, if we ever get rid of that thing, you know. <laughs> oh, and then the scanner's there, and yeah, so, um, we, we're actually looking for a corner, uh, shelf to put there, get the scanner off the table, get the thing done. Where's my phone going off? But anyway, all right, back to the podcast. Okay, so I did finish it. It's got the candles and the wreath on it and I do fuss. I want it perfect and idealistically it would be in the center of the table but we still have to find that uh, like a corner shelf that's big enough that uh, we don't want it huge but I don't want it look all the ones I found are like really dinky so yeah I want though I want that so that we can put that in there um anyway so I got that done there is a Christmas order that I did one evening, um, and I will put that picture in right here. Man, a lot of cut and go, and yeah, okay. So, hopefully, that's the last of the cut and goes, except for one. Um, I have had a busy week, but not necessarily a busy crochet week. So, um, one of the things, okay, so you, let's just back up just a little bit. You know that I finished the one doily. Well, now I am working on one for, um, my cake plate. plate. I always have Christmas cookies on it. And I'll be honest with you. I have, I am using the same, um, Nova that comes, that came with that kit because I like that just the way it is. I, I don't know why I didn't, I was going to make it bigger to like go over the whole table, but I fell in love with it when I saw it underneath the wreath the other day. So yeah, I finished it up and that was it. Um. So, I am using the same Nova that I did for the other one, and it's 100% cotton, you know. Okay. But, this is all I have of it. Okay, now, this is what I frogged of it. Um, it has been frogged and redone and frogged and redone and You ever had one of those projects that you just, you think it should go one way, and then it doesn't. 
Well, this is one of those projects where, I don't know, I guess I just lost count and put the corner in the wrong spot. Um, <laughs> then once I got one corner in the wrong spot, I, I actually have had three more rows done on this and had to frog it twice. So the first time, um, I put the corner in the wrong spot on the second row down. Didn't realize it because of the way I was working the rounds. So yeah, by the time I got to two, I got that round done that I had made the mistake on. And then another round done when I went to, uh, bring it together, it didn't work up right. And I was like, what? So yeah, I ripped all that out to go back to where I had made the mistake. Then I get that row right and I've moved on to what I think is the next row and come to find out I still didn't do it right. Um, I, I don't know what I was thinking and I looked at it after I did it. I was like, why did I do that? I know it's because I was watching TV or distracted or whatever, or not paying attention. And I tend to do that whenever there's something else going on in the room. I tend to, and of course I frogged this and had it all laid out on the couch. And then <laughs> worm decided to get up there. So I grabbed it and snatched it and put it in my little clear plastic bag that the kit stuff came in. And that's how it got in this condition. And so I thought, well, while I'm podcasting, I will show everybody that I too <laughs> have issues with my yarn. Um, like I said, this is two rows worth of yarn. And uh, I, I don't know. I just, where I joined it didn't work up right. I didn't count right on one. I didn't put the corner in the right spot and, and I have put in and taken out these three rows several times now. Um, I do believe I'm on my third, this might be the fourth time. I think it's just third, but it depends because I ripped out that one row and then realized that the um, issue was on the row below it. And that's why it wouldn't work up right. So I redid just one row thinking I had the, the issue fixed. And then come to find out I had to um, do, I had to frog like two um, things down the road. It, yeah, two rows down the pattern. So anyway, it was, yeah, it's been interesting. But, so I got that, the one done, and this one will be done. Uh, I have the cookies made, I already did that. But, all right, sticking with crochet. Sticking with crochet first. Um, so, this, of course, has exasperated me just a little bit, and there is no pattern to it. I was just making it, and, you know, that... That might be part of my problem is because I don't use a pattern. So maybe if I used a pattern, I wouldn't have to frog so much. <laughs> Just saying. I don't know. Um, uh, so I did, um, I think it was Friday I started on this. And once Warren jumps in the middle of it, you just get this thing. But it is a loose thing. I mean, it's not like it's in big knots. It's just kind of wadded up because he jumps in the middle of it and and leaves it all cattywampus. When I frog, I normally lay it out, you know, so that way when I crochet, I can crochet it back up. And I normally do not leave it like this overnight. I, I normally go right back and finish it. Um, 
The last time that I frogged it, however, it was late at night. Worm was being warm. Um, he, it was bedtime and he knew it. He really just wanted to go to bed. So, um, I, he jumped in the middle of it and made it a mess and I thought, I'm just going to leave it and I can get to it later. And so, hence, I am now getting to it later. Uh, and that was Friday night, I believe. Yes, because Thursday night I put um, the wreath on the doily and decided I liked it. So I tied it and finished it off Thursday night and just said, okay, it's done. You know, I call it, it's done. It is what it is. Um, kind of like calling the game. So I did that Thursday night and then Friday I started on this one. And you can see how it ended, and I got kind of exasperated. And then, um, up until that point during the week, I had been working on that doily for the Advent Wreath. Um, I was bound and determined I was going to get it done. Ugh, I have a hair in my mouth. And uh, so I had been working all week to get that last row right and then finally I did and once I decided it was done I was like okay it's done so um oops. sorry I have to go to work today so um it's done okay thank you for the time to do that so Friday I started this one literally got this far before and it's just you know double crochet and this solid round is what I keep messing up I have different number of stitches in between each corner so therefore it wasn't working up properly um, I just kind of tossed it away and said that's it on that for now um, I will probably finish it up this week just because I know what I'm doing. I just not paying attention, counting, putting my corners in the wrong spot, doing my corners the wrong way. <laughs> um, at one point I was doing a V-stitch and for some reason I switched to two double crochets with a two chain in between them. And it was just supposed to be one V-stitch. So I, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> what I get for uh, watching movies and doing all that stuff instead of just crocheting. Um, so I worked on that Friday night and then Saturday I decided I was going to pick this back up. And I am down to the last, not really. I'm down to the last part. Let's put it that way. Looking for my hook. So this is the front. It doesn't have the hook in it. Apparently neither of them have the hook in it. Okay, so this is the back. And literally ripping out stitches because I don't have my hook in there. Okay. So I have actually started with the sleeve um, right here. I started a decrease. So, yeah. I did it on this side. And I just have to do, this is the back of it. Okay, so it's just plain day, back, and it should, you know. But I've still got, I don't know. Um, I haven't really measured it. Still got that much to go. So probably a good um, five rows. And then we'll see how it does. Um, but yeah. So this is the bag. I have not decided on the front yet. I have it to where I just have to do um, 
the decreases. So I've got this and this matching, and I am to the point where I do the decreases on the arms. So in the front. So I have the bulk of it done. Um, I, uh, oops. Uh, I have the bulk of it done. I just have probably five more rows on this. And then, um, in those five, probably in the last, I say in three rows or so, I will put the swoop for the neck in here. I haven't figured that part out yet. I mean, I know how to do it, but I haven't figured out how wide the neck part's going to be. I'm thinking, you know, that part right there. And yes, I just quartered that. So, um, it'll be half, but of course that half will be the middle half. Ta-da! Okay. And literally I will count, make sure that there's the same number of stitches. And then, oh, instead of double crochet, I'll bring it down with a half double crochet and then a single crochet along the edge. And I will do that just to make that swoop. And I'll probably do it for two to three rows. Um, I really want it off the back of my neck because I have a colored shirt I'm going to wear underneath it. So we'll see how many rows I decide to do it. But it's getting there. <clears throat> it is all purple. Purple and mauves. I don't know where the camera's getting this gray. Alright, so that's the back. I just have, I'll, I'll bet you five rows left to do with that. Um, this one, however, is considerably shorter. And I need to figure out what design I'm going to do in the front. Um, I don't know if I want, I don't want a solid neck. I don't know if I want a swooped, like, or a V neck. Um, yeah, just don't know. Haven't decided on the neck yet. So I have it to where I start putting in the neck and I don't know what I, how I want to finish this out. Um, I do know that I have to decrease for the sleeves, but I mean, other than that, I can, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. So yeah, the front is kind of at a standstill because I don't, know what I'm going to do. I guess that means I should have had a pattern in mind before I started it, which I did not. I just started making it. So, um, like I said, I hope to have the back of this done probably this week, to be honest with you. Probably this week. Um, and I like that idea too. So I I'm getting excited about it being done and I'll get to wear it to work, and it's been super cold. So, yeah. Um, and it looks like I'm going to have plenty of yarn to make this a vest. So, yeah. Um, I may or may not have yarn enough to make an accessory to go with it. But, hey. So, that one is being worked on. And I also picked up this one. Um, not for very much though, because I really, I was thinking, hmm, it's getting colder. I want to get it done. So yeah, I've started another row. Oh, uh, let's see here. Well, I've gotten further on it than I thought. Okay. Uh -uh. Wow. So I have less than half to do to finish the row. So, yeah. Yep. So I've gotten quite far on it on the next row around. But uh, yeah, it's coming along quite nicely. And I'm just going to use out this um, yarn 
and however long it is is however long it is. Um, it's just going to be to go over my shoulders and I will probably wear, I don't know, a white or a black. The front one is fall, this one is spring, so I'll probably wear dark underneath this side and light underneath this side. And this camera is driving me crazy. I've got to figure out why that does that. Um, it's recording and then all of a sudden it just goes to sleep, freezes up. So I don't know. Um, maybe it's time for a new laptop. Who knows? Uh, anyway, so this one is being worked on. And like I said, as big as it is, is as big as it's going to be when I have this much yarn gone. So a good stopping point, finish that yarn and then call it a day on that one. So I, I plan on getting these two finished, the purple sweater and this one finished before the end of the year. So is that going to happen? I don't know because I said the same thing last year. But the purple one is really close. Um, so I can't really complain there. It really is close. Um, so that is really all I've been doing is trying to finish those two projects and or those three projects. I've got the doily. I've got the purple sweater. And then I've got that other one. So and then the only other thing that I have, I think, is the little squares. And I'm not going to work on them until uh, I get these others done. I'm trying to get back to just having one project and being able to go all the way through it without finding something. It's not going to happen. Okay, I'll always have at least two because I'll get bored with one and have to do the other. So anyway, I uh, did that. <sighs> Then this weekend I did a lot of Christmassy stuff. The yard is decorated. The uh, tree, it you know, you saw down there. I still have the straw ornaments to put on it. Um, the yard, the tree vacuumed, made cookie dough. So I tend to take one day and I don't just make cookies because as my family has grown, we eat less cookies. When the kids were little, they'd eat two cookies every single day that they come home from school and they'd get off the bus. Um, and this one, RJ was little. And then when he was homeschooled, he ate four cookies a day because he thought he had to have a snack at 10. Remember, he was on a lot of medications. So he'd have a, a Christmas cookies at 10 and then he'd have Christmas cookies at 3. Um, and then he ate his breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And sometimes he had two cookies before bed. Um, probably not a good thing, but it is what it is. It made Christmas Christmas. So um, anyway, now we don't eat that many. So I make six at a time of each kind. So I, I, make, I take one day and make up the cookie dough and I put these tubs and I've got chocolate chip and I've got, I haven't done the oatmeal yet. What did I do? I did three different kinds in the, I did peanut butter, chocolate chip, oh, and thumbprint with the jelly in them. And then, um, uh, I made Reese's peanut butter. They're not really Reese's, but my kids call them that. They're the Reese's bars, you know, the graham cracker, peanut butter crust with chocolate on top. So I made those. Um, so I did that, decorated the yard, did the tree for the most part, um, did the vacuuming, half the dusting. I haven't finished dusting. I know, I got to get it done before Christmas because it's really starting with the fireplace now burning. There is a lot of dust. <laughs> so uh, then I did spend a lot of time this weekend with RJ. Um, so first off, I'm, I'm not going to put the pictures in, okay, of this. So it just use your imagination. 
Randall was attacked by something, and it honestly looks like a feral hog or something he's got on his thigh right above what would be our knee. He has got a deep puncture wound. Then on the inside of that same thigh, he's got like wounds. Um, they look more like puncture wounds or maybe, I don't know. He's got some big gash, gashes and then he's got small little gashes from his, what would be his knee down. And uh, it looks like something's just chewed on his leg and made, you know, about four or five good deep puncture wounds. He, um, that happened Thursday morning. RJ called me at work and normally he does not call me at work at all. I had some pain pills that I gave Randall. We cleaned it all up took care of it. You know, he, he's doing much better. RJ was super, super scared. Um, I have not heard him scared like that in a long time. He said, so he actually found him in the morning and he didn't call me or anything. He put him in the house, cleaned it up, you know, um, put him in the house, would not leave him out. And then he had to go to work. When he got home from work, Randall couldn't hardly stand up even to go outside to the bathroom and he ended up urinating all over the floor and RJ got really scared um, because he couldn't control his, his bladder. He, you know, so um, what had happened is RJ had found him. He said there was still blood and stuff and it looked like it was pretty fresh. So when he put him in the house, Randall laid around and got what we call stove up, meaning that his muscles just got tight, adrenaline wore off, you know, stiff. So when Randall got stiff, RJ got home, then he couldn't make his back end it because it was too stiff. So RJ helped him up. You know, he called me at work and I said, okay, so first thing you got to do is get his back end working. It'll be fine. I said, stand him up, just start massaging. And of course, when RJ did, Randall could get around. Okay. He'd already peed all over and, you know, and I told her, RJ, I went and got a old towel and threw it down. I was like, good, good. It can be thrown through the washing machine. It's fine. Um, but he has progressively gotten better. I had some pain pills, which are dog pain pills. They're not. Um, he took the first two days because of how stiff and where the wound is on his knee. He took an entire hundred milligram pill. Um, he is 78 pounds and that is a perfect dose for him. Okay. So, um, he took full pill the first day and the second day. And the second day, RJ said he was really starting to come around. Then um, the third day and the fourth day, because that happened Thursday, Friday, he got full pill. Saturday, Sunday, and then today is Monday. So I don't, I haven't talked to RJ yet, but so he got two full pills and then Saturday and Sunday, RJ cut the pills in half. So he's only getting a half dose. Um, a full dose for him would be the 100 milligrams. And then I had RJ cut them in half because I want the dog to walk it off a little bit more and rely less on the pain pills. So, um, Rivera is a, is a good product, but if you leave them on it too long or whatever, it, it has its own side effects and drawbacks. Um, liver damage being one of them. So, uh, yeah, that happened with Randall and that was Thursday night. Mm. Friday, I uh, went to Chris Klingelmacht and that's when I started doing all of the Christmas stuff, getting the yard done and the tree done and all of that. RJ brought me a load of wood. Um, so 
so I just have it kicked off out in the between the shop and the house. Oh well. Um, yeah, I'll get it split and get it done. It's just I had other things on my mind. But uh, yeah, I decorated the yard and made the cookies and the cookie dough. Decorated the tree. The only thing that I didn't get done is clean up my bedroom. It has to. It, I know it sounds terrible. I sh I'll take you in there and show you, but I'm not going to. It has totes everywhere. All the Christmas totes out of the attic are in that room. And this is the thing. Roommate isn't big on Christmas. Um, roommate does Christmas. But if roommate had a choice, no tree, no decorations, just, you know, get together, have a meal, and that's it. Me, roommate just, it, it's not, just not roommate's thing. Roommate is not the decorating kind. And y'all know me? I am. So, I took you on a short little walkabout to show you what I got at Kris Kringle Mart this year. And just to show you what I've done so far. So... Of course, the most important thing around the house is the Advent. Um, I normally burn it with breakfast. Roommate doesn't do Advent, but I do. Again, you know, I love my little doily around it. It just is perfect. But anyway, so we've got that. Then down here in the den, I'm going to, we've got the Christmas tree. Alright, and the only thing it doesn't have on it is the straw ornaments, and I'll show you that in a minute. This is my grandma's Christmas tree. My crochet is all around it, so, yeah, we got that one. So, let me go back over here, and I've got the presents wrapped. That's one of the things that I did this weekend, was get everything wrapped and put the way I wanted it. Okay, sorry. So, um... I still have my straw ornaments to put up. I still haven't gotten them up there. This goes away. It's what I store my ornaments in. And then this will be gone. And so, yeah. Of course that. Um, Christmas wine. That every year, it's supposed to be a surprise. Only one supposed, person is supposed to do it. Hitch out of the Christmas tree. Hitch. No. Not for you. Yeah, this goes on all day. One or the other of them will be nosing underneath that Christmas tree. They're like little kids. Um, anyway, so every year, it's supposed to rotate person, so only one person knows what the Christmas wine is. It's me doing it, so I just get whatever I find and, you know, something new, something different. Um, those ornaments need to go on. Oh, and I need my baskets full of candy. And I need to make one more. And my little stars. I have two stars that open up and have candy in them. Um, but last year, Worm ate one. So I've only got five of these little basket things. So, yeah, I need to get on the ball and make another one. Or just live with the memory that, you know, we only going to have five. <laughs> so, I don't know. Okay, so the other thing that I have is my Tia. And this one I have not lit this year yet. Um, I don't know why, I just haven't. Uh, it might be because the dogs tend to jump up here whenever I'm doing anything over here. So that might be a little scary. You have to ignore all the dog blankets everywhere. Yeah. And then, of course, I showed you this in the dark. You have to ignore my crochet, too. This my granny and I made together a uh, long, long time ago. Then we've got these two angels. There is actually an angel ornament from uh, roommate's grandmother in there. Of course, there's candy in the candy dish. RJ. This is our secret stash because RJ steals our stash. But we don't really care. It's just something to fuss with, if that makes sense. I have my manger scene my little wooden Santa 
and my little angel. And then this year at Kliss Klingel Macht. Okay, so all four of these are smokers. That one I've had the longest. That's a little gingerbread house. This one is the one I got this year. I got that one and that one I've had. I can't remember exactly. I don't get one every year because they're kind of expensive. But um, I honestly think this is going to be my collection. I don't think I'm going to grow it anymore unless something just knocked me dead off my feet kind of thing. So, but I really like those. Um, he's out cutting wood. He's out the tree. He's got the gifts and the lighting. And it just, yeah. So, I don't know. I just really like it. And the fact that they vary in size makes it more interesting. So, all right. Then I've got my uh, little Hummel um, manger scene. These two, I don't really like them, but they were a gift, and I don't want to throw them out, and I don't know what to do with them. I'm not a known person. So, yeah, they just sit here on the shelf. I mean, they're cute. One's green and white. One's red and white. I'm just not a known person. Anyway. And then here is the advent calendar. Each drawer, of course, pulls out. Today is the fifth. Has not been emptied yet. But these four have been. Oops. And it lights up, but my batteries are going dead. I need to get new batteries for it. And the tree turns. So, yeah. All right, other than that, um, this is pretty much the most Christmassy room in the house. Um, now this is, this is funny, because watch this. Oh no, I knocked the flashlight down. Oh no, I knocked the flashlight down. <laughs> I have no idea why this makes me crack up. I have up. no idea why this makes me Okay, we okay. need to turn it off. We cannot record like this. Cannot record like this. <laughs> okay, so the dogs hate that thing. Oh, sorry, was really thinking up the flashlight. Um, oh, and I forgot the stockings over there. Only the dog toys go in those. Uh, it's funny because the dogs hate that thing. So the next room that does have just a little bit of Christmassy in it is my Kleskengelma. Uh, not. Nah. Hang on. St. Nicholas Katach's boot is there for St. Nicholas Day. I have this one and I did I light it up the beginning of this the year. Can't find the proper kind of candles here. So um yeah, I've been very leery of using it, but I do light it, watch it for a few minutes, and that means it's Christmas. So yeah. This is my Oma's big tia and the white Christmas tree is my other grandmother's so yeah I mean that it is what it is and then of course roommate has cross on the bedroom door cross on the bathroom and I think that's about it I don't do anything down the hallway down for my bedroom just because nobody's down there so anyway but, yep, just, oh, <sighs> we're hoping someone will come by and just sweep us off our feet. <laughs> Not really. But, yep, anyway, so that is Christmas and sights and sounds around the house. Okay, so, yeah, there's a little walkabout. Um, I did all the vacuuming. Now, I am gonna put this out there I know I'm gonna take criticism for it but I have my reasons okay so a while back um, a good year or so ago hit it was found that hitch had a heart murmur that is pretty severe um, it was a high four and a half to a five on a six digit scale. So the scale goes from one to six. He was already four and a half, almost five 
um, maybe just a little over five on their scale. So anyway, he had that going on. He's got all his anxieties and all of that. And if you remember, he could be put under anesthetic because of the heart murmur and how severe it was, so he couldn't be fixed. Uh, so fast forward, we made the decision that we couldn't adopt him out. He's got too many health issues and too many psychological issues. So normally, if you do rescue, you will understand what, what this means. You can find a home for a dog with issues, okay? If they have mental issues, um, anxiety, that kind of stuff, um, behavioral issues, you normally can find a home for those because there's always people out there who want to help them overcome it. You can find a home for a dog with health issues, okay? Okay. Because there's normally someone who has already lived it or is living it. Uh, someone with a heart issue will take a dog with a heart issue because they know what it's like. And they know in the long run that dog's not going to be taken because of it. And they, if they were a dog, they wouldn't want to not be taken because of it. So um, an overweight dog has the tendency to be adopted by an overweight person uh, just because they know they've been there. Um, a dog with anxiety is normally adopted, sadly, to somebody else with anxiety, and they both end up being very hyper people and dog. Um, but normally, if they have one or the other, you can find them a home. Finding a dog who has mental or behavioral issues and a ton of health issues, your chances are greater if you're going to be struck by lightning. Okay? You're more likely to be struck by lightning than adopted out if they have behavioral and uh, health issues especially health issues of the heart. Um, the other thing that health issues, epilepsy, the heart, and cancer. Those three things are the hardest to get them adopted out. So, um, yeah. And I used to work at the shelter, so I'm not just throwing this out there being mean, okay? A dog with both behavioral and health issues would be euthanized because the likelihood of being able to find it at home is zero to none. Okay. Like I said, I'm more likely to be struck by lightning than I'm to find that dog at home. Well, we made the decision not to euthanize and just to keep him and let him live. His, I, I never had intention of keeping Hitch. He was number one. He was supposed to be, I was supposed to be fostering for just a little bit. For a gentleman who had to move with his job, two years later, I'm still fostering and I'm not. He's just ours. He's mine. I say he's roommate's dog. Roommate says it's my dog. So, yeah. Um, with his anxiety, he never leaves our property. Okay? With his heart condition, he never goes anywhere. Anyway, so one of the things that his heart murmur causes are, and there's a special name for them, it's S-Y-N-C-O-P-E, uh, Synscope Seizures. And he had his first um, Saturday night. Yeah. I was trying to think if it was Friday night or Saturday, but it was Saturday night. Um, of course, roommate was in the shower, and Hitch just fell over into it. it. If you've ever seen a dog have this kind of seizure, you'll know what I'm talking about. They're 
they they lose control of their body and the just every muscle in their body just tightens up and tremors. And I mean, in dog, different dogs have different symptoms. This just happens to be what Hitch has done. And, and we had one other dog that had seizures in the past. Um, and that's what they do. And basically, oh. and I did find out that Hitch drools a lot too. So basically, um, I just sat on the floor and held him and talked to him and he had his first seizure ever. It's the beginning of the end. Now, how long that end is going to be, we don't know. Okay. His heart murmur was a four and a half, five. It probably is, you know, a little bit higher now. A six is really, really bad. Yes, seizures can be controlled with medicine. Here's the problem with that. We have made the decision that um, because of his anxiety, he's not going to the vet. We talked to our vet. I have an app on my phone that gets me chat with a live vet. Um, and it's offered by that clinic. So then they're notified that I had an issue and, but he's not going for an annual physical. Um, he should be going, but his anxiety he just can't handle it. And it'll send him over the roof. Getting him in the car is okay. Cause I can put the car in the garage, but then the minute he has to get out of the car, at the vet he's anxious and he's just spinning circles and he's just eh, and it's too much for his heart and I can't give him anything to calm him down because that medication takes its toll on his heart so pretty much he's just here we decided over a year ago year and a half ago to just let him live his best life as if we didn't know but it's hard to act like you don't know. So, especially when he has a seizure, you know? So, yeah. Mm. Randall had his issues Thursday. And then Saturday, uh, Hitch had his issues. So, it is what it is, you know? But... Anyway, little duck's doing good. Hitch is the only thing that, that concerns me. Christmas is coming along. My crochet is coming along. RJ is doing okay. He just scared for his dog. Um, he brought me a little wood down, hung out for a while. Uh, trying to think what else he did. So, anyway, yeah, it's been a, a good, good week. But, and I am trying to adjust to the new format. Um, I haven't done any sewing, so therefore you're not seeing any sewing on this one. But next week, I'm going to try and break it up. Um, I've got, I had to go and get uh, elastic and zippers and different stuff that I needed. So, um, I do have some sewing projects going on. I just don't have. Haven't worked on them. So, and next week I plan on working on a couple of simple things. But, um, yeah, those simple things are just going to have to try and be in another podcast. Right? I'm going to do one sewing, one crochet. If I don't get carried away. So, you guys, happy second week of Advent. Um, thanks for watching. God bless y'all. And I will see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.